Good morning everyone. I think this is week four, maybe five. Um, maybe four of the wet on wet technique that we're still on. Um, and this week I want you to have a little bit of fun with your paint. Um, but we're also going to use masking fluid. I've already covered masking fluid previously with you a little bit and certainly in more detail in some of my notes so it'd be a good idea to read those again um, then I won't have to write it all again for you um, but I do want you to try and um, use it this week a little bit more than we have been so that you can um, you know really sort of get to grips with it because it can be actually quite challenging um, so what, what I'm going to do is actually draw with my masking fluid, my drawing gum, and um, show you how. Good idea to give it a shake before you start, even um, about an hour or two before you start using it, if you can ever remember to, because it otherwise you get bubbles, but I'm going to have to just cope with the bubbles. So what I'm going to do is draw with the drawing gum, masking fluid, and I'm going to create some little blossoms on my page. And obviously by masking them off, I'm keeping the paper white, and that is the whole point of masking fluid. Um, so if you can find some little blossoms like this, it would be great. Um, if not, maybe you might have some apple blossom or pear blossom, something like that, that you could use. I've had a go at um, using both. And I want to obviously reserve the white paper for the flowers. Various um, tools can be used. I've got um, the actual masking fluid tool here, which has a rubber shape at one end and a brush the other. I think I covered this earlier as well. But do remember if you use the brush that you, you need to use something like fairy liquid with it to protect the, the bristles. I've got to be a bit quicker this week because I ran over time last week. We've got a different setup. We're using the video camera which actually cut itself off after half an hour but then starts up again. So that's why you had um, had it in two parts last week, but I'll try and do the whole thing in, in the one and then it's easier for, for you to, to find and to use next next time you uh, switch on. Right, okay. One thing I haven't mentioned anywhere at all is the fact that you can actually use, um, pop a little bit of water with your masking fluid to make it um, flow better. So I'm actually going to just do a little bit of a drawing here and then show you some that I did earlier. If you actually do mix some water with it, put it into another vessel so that you're not um, watering down the whole of your bottle of stuff. So try not to be too worried about it this week. Just, if you feel like it, just paint this on without drawing first but if you lack confidence in that way just draw a little light drawing first and then block it in but keep your drawing light what I'm doing here is creating some little petal shapes that I can see in front of me and I'm also going to mask off the stalk the branch it's got lots of pretty little buds as well, so get some of those in. Very useful stuff because with painting watercolour we can't paint light over dark, so we have to reserve the paper underneath because we don't use white paint. I'm keeping an eye on my little sprig of blossom here. 
I would say, possibly if you can't find the blossom, you might even be able to just create it out of your head or in a way copy some of the shapes that I made and I'll be posting to you. I don't need to show you too much more, I think you grasp the way to use it. I'm actually using the rubber shaper but if I wanted to have some finer marks because it actually has got, let me show you, some lovely little stamens and dots and bits and pieces so let's use the ruling pen to get some of those little marks going on. So as I say, don't be too precise about it with something like this. If you're, if you're putting stamens in the centre of um, a more serious flower, something that you're um, painting that has light stamens in the centre, obviously you can be a little bit more careful. But I think just let this float around a bit. Okay. Now the other thing you can actually do with masking and or paint is to blow it and with this kind of um, subject that we have here it's a very nice method to use to actually get some nice branches appearing but let that dry first under normal circumstances and I'm putting a little bit of very thin paper down there so that I can protect what's going on underneath and I'm just going to actually put a little bit of my masking on the edge of it and using a straw hope you've got one if not you're going to have to make something and waggle the end excuse me I'm going to have to get down here and blow some of the masking off. You'll see some I've done earlier in a minute that'll actually show up better. But actually I'm making some marks here with my blowing. You actually would not be able to paint like that so well with your brush. It's a little bit unpredictable, but it does make lovely marks. And with the masking fluid, of course, when you paint it over it, if there's something that you don't like or when it's dry, you can rub it off and you don't have to keep it. Um, but I'll also show you that you can use that blowing technique. I have a little snowdrop here. Not that it's in the garden at the moment. It isn't. Um, I just want to show you that I can also blow some twiggy areas into that using paint and my brush. I'm just checking that I'm still recording. It's nerve wracking this is. I have the, um, the tech team on my back all the time keeping a, a close eye on what I'm doing. Right, so let's have some twigs. Hopefully this will work. So it's got to be quite watery and quite juicy because it's got to move around. And the reason I put it on here is so that it doesn't make this big splodgy mark on your in your work. Excuse me. Okay, you can control it to an extent by wiggling the end around and getting it to do what you want to do, where you want it to go to an extent. And then maybe just paint the bottom in a little bit. So that's the idea of it. I would always have a little practice on something like this first before you actually go ahead and use it. Um, and that's going to dry up looking quite pretty. I would actually put more 
on there if I had more time. So that's another little technique that I haven't shown you before. I'm going to put the top back on my drawing gum because if you spill it and get it on your clothes it actually is not great fun because it won't come off very easily at all. So I've also got um, a, a dried masking picture here that I again didn't draw and I'm going to pop some background over the top and then you'll see how it shows up. Okay, So you can use a nice fat brush that's um, a hake and wet the whole area making sure that you do actually go into all the crevices and when it's completely dry obviously that's not going to move but don't start painting it or putting water on it before it is dry because if you do you're going to get it on your brush and that's another thing that you won't like because it won't come up out of your brush very easily but we do have some ways of helping out on at times like that, that but do try and avoid it if possible. I've got some indigo which is a nice bright dark blue which is going to show up my painting really well. But what you must do is make sure you go everywhere with it otherwise you're going to um, create some shapes if you leave light and white paper around your mask area you're going to distort the shape that you've made and defeat the object to a large extent okay so you don't have to go right to the edges of the paper because that's just a small picture um, when that's dry, it's obviously going to be three times lighter. So then you've got the choice of either leaving it like that or putting another um, layer on top. So, or another colour even. Which is what I did here. Okay, now this one's dry. And I think I put two two coats of the um, indigo and then I went in with um, a, a, a red of some sort, maybe a alizarin, just to create a darker area under here. And so then you've got to allow your background to dry and you can use your finger but if you've got a lot to do like this, it's much better to have a piece of screwed up kitchen roll and rub it up. And again, I didn't draw this, so you should be able to draw quite nicely with something like this, with a, with a little piece of blossom or something that's got branches, because it's fairly easy to, to get those shapes. You should be able to do this without drawing, which obviously is lovely and quick. and you'll have another string to your bow and give you lovely practice at actually putting down the masking fluid because actually in a painting, a more serious painting perhaps that has some masking in it, quite a lot of masking if you don't make the right marks it can actually not look very good at all so you really have got to try to have a good practice with it so you can see how much you need to put onto your applicator and how much you need to put down onto the paper. I'm exhausted now. Hang on, nearly there. But I want to get it all off so I can show you what you're going to end up with. It's been on there a little while, this is why it's taking a little bit longer. So it's going to be easier for you if as soon as it's dry, you take it off. Right, and this isn't going on the floor. It's going in my bin. Great, so now you can see the shape of my lovely little branch with all my little blossoms 
and you can see the blown areas that I, where I've created some twigs. All right, so all you do now is to, very little really, um, you can paint in your branches using whatever colour you choose. I haven't really got much out here that's suitable, but very easily using, you can even leave it white if you like it, but paint in your branches and all it needs, there's not much going on in the centre of those lovely little blossoms, apart from a little bit of green. So have that ready and pop a little bit of green in and also maybe a little bit of blue shadow perhaps into your flowers. And you can paint the twigs or you can leave them. I'll show you one I did earlier. I'm conscious that I mustn't go over time. Um, where's the one I did earlier? Excuse me. Hold a sec. There's one I did earlier. And you can see how much work I actually put into it. Not very much. So a lot of the work is done with the masking fluid and the background. But if you can look closely, you can see that I've actually splattered with the masking fluid as well. I did some splattering last week. And you can obviously also splatter with this, which leaves lo lovely little light areas underneath, which works very well for things like snow. Okay, so that's a finished one. And I have another one here with the apple blossom. So I had my little sprig of apple blossom, which I, um, I, didn't paint, I didn't draw that one either. But the other little areas that you see, little marks that you see in the background here, while my background um, paint was still wet, I dropped in some large salt, okay? Sea salt or whatever. And it created these little fuzzy marks for me, which might look like some other little flowers or some kind of plant going on behind. And then I've just painted them yellow. And the, the salt actually leaves a dark centre because it picks up the colour of the background and drops it down again and leaves you a little dark centre. But I just went over it with a little bit of pink. OK, so if, you, if you've got some japonica um, or something that's got colour in it, you can use that same technique to actually create a nice quick little picture with blossom. Okay. Great to actually um, create cards for people in a very quick way using the, the masking fluid. Okay, so that's another idea. If you can't find any blossom, maybe you can find some daisies or something like that. And it's done similarly. Again, I didn't draw it. So draw with the masking fluid. Pop a background down. Very, very quick. And you've got yourself a nice little picture. While we're on the subject, this isn't great insofar as I've only got two flowers here. Maybe if I'd put another bud or something here it would have made more of a picture of it. I did notice um, a couple of weeks ago when we were painting tulips that several of you actually just painted two. Try and remember the odd number situation whereby odd numbers or three, five, always better than maybe just one or two. One's okay Two, not so good. Another one here would have looked a lot better. So, think about it. And I think I'm just about there for this week, apart from showing you a more serious painting that I did. 
that has the daffodils which are around at the moment and some of the blossom as well. So maybe those who are a little bit more advanced might like to do something more complicated or even if you're not advanced, have a go anyway. But you can see my little blossoms in the background and some of the twigs that I've blown which you absolutely can't paint in such a, a fine, nice, natural way. So do try the blowing technique. And the tulips, obviously, I've left completely white using the white paper. And I didn't mask the tulips, <laughs> the daffodils. I didn't mask the daffodils at all, so... They were just drawn, or not drawn, I can't remember. doesn't look as if I've drawn them, actually. Um, just painted around. So try a, a, a more complicated one as well, if you, if you feel you'd like to. And I think that's about it. So in this picture, and this week, I've shown you most of the things and I've popped in most of the things that we've covered so far with the wet on wet technique. We've got salting, we've got masking, we've got the layering of paint and creating various shapes into the background and we've also um, now got the using the larger salt so that's yet another technique for you and the blowing. All right, so. Lots of techniques can be used with the watercolour and it helps, you know, it helps you to get marks that you possibly, definitely couldn't get using your brush. So that's it for this week then. Have, a, have another good week and I look forward to seeing your paintings. Stay safe and well and I look forward to seeing you again next Monday when in fact we'll be having a little bit more fun with um, the wet on wet technique when we're actually going to paint the whole page and then paint on the top of it, okay? Um, so it doesn't have to be white, it can be any flower you wish um, so keep a look out for anything that, coming in the garden or in the hedgerow that you feel you'd like to paint Vegetables, if you haven't got flowers or anything that you just fancy painting, having already popped a background down first. Okay? So, see you again next Monday. Thank you. Bye.